So I've got a lot of experience using different types of cameras for many different types of works, and I get to play with all of these uh, at different times throughout the week for different projects. But I wanted to address one major issue that I see a lot of either beginners or sometimes even pretty well experienced photographers and videographers making. So the main question that I think all people on YouTube get asked when it comes to photography and videography is what camera should I buy? And a lot of times the answers that people tend to get are something along the lines of whatever you can afford. And in some ways that's the right answer, but actually you could end up buying the completely wrong camera that's designed for something completely different. Like you don't want to end up accidentally buying a cinema camera when you're a photographer because it does video. But one other thing that I see a lot of people doing is that they immediately hop on the bandwagon and buy the most expensive brand new camera that comes out, uh, you know, like a brand new Sony a7 IV, A7S III, what, you know, whatever the new ones are, and they fork out thousands of dollars on these cameras, and they can't seem to get the kind of quality out of the camera that they hope that they could. And honestly, that unfortunately, that's not the camera's fault. That's actually just user error. And that's okay, because everybody has to learn. One of the reasons this channel has been so focused on cameras like the ZV-10 or A6700 that you're watching, or like the FX30, is because they're relatively affordable cameras that can produce incredible image quality when you know what you're doing. And you see, that's the key. You see, this little camera, the ZV-E10, can produce a fantastic image if you know what you're doing. If someone knows what they're doing with a camera, they can produce a better image with a, a cheap camera like this than a complete newbie to f cameras could with something like a cinema camera. And, and that's not because of the cameras. Again, this is all down to user experience. See, I get a lot of comments on some of my videos talking about some of these cheaper cameras being like, why would you talk about these? These are pointless. Or, you know, it's got rolling shutter problems or whatever. Just get an A7S three, And it's like, that's like a $3,000, $4,000 camera by the time you get a lens or so. And then oftentimes I hop over onto their YouTube channel and they've got some videos made with those cameras and the quality is not that great and I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody down but I'm just saying like it's better to gain experience and learn how to use a camera properly before you invest in a super expensive camera that's why I think that most beginners or people who are getting started uh, or people who maybe aren't happy with the quality of the product that they're getting with their current camera shouldn't buy an expensive camera or maybe should start with something cheap because a cheap camera can produce a good image when you learn how to use it properly. And once you've learned how to use a cheap camera well, you can actually translate all of that information that you've learned with the cheap camera into your expensive camera and get even better footage. Of course, more expensive cameras are better than cheaper cameras, like an A7S III or an FX30 will get a better image than a Sony ZV-10, of course, but only if you know what you're doing. And throughout this video, all, all the clips that I've been showing, these are all things that I've shot on the ZV-10, and I think you know, a lot of it's really cool, nice quality images that I'd be happy enough to provide to a client. And it comes down to a few main things that you have to master before you even think about buying like an expensive camera, a cinema camera, or anything like that. And that is first off, learn how to dial in your settings. Your, you know, stick your camera in manual and learn how to do it. Watch tons of videos out there about how to dial in your aperture. What does your aperture do? Dial in your ISO, being careful not to crank your ISO too high or you're gonna get really loud, noisy images. And how to control your shutter speed, making sure you're getting the right amount of motion blur in your shot that you want. Dialing those three settings in uh, accurately into a camera is one of the best ways to get a good image. Secondly, learn lighting. Lighting is far more important than most people realize. A, a well lit shot will look so much better than a poorly lit shot. For example, you know, even in this studio, right? I just set this up within about five minutes. It's not the best setup I've ever done, but if I were to turn all of the studio lights off and turn on just the overheads, and this is the exact same shot, all the studio lights are turned off and I've just turned the overhead lights on. There's a buzzing coming from all of these. You probably can't hear it, but it's rather annoying uh, and it doesn't look very good. Whereas with them back on, you can tell that it's just a much nicer image. And again, that's not because the camera's bad, the A6700 is a great camera, but lighting really aids to it. So dialing in your settings manually, lighting your shots well if you're able to. Sometimes if you're running gun or if you're at weddings, you know, obviously that's that's a limited uh, option that you have, but dialing in your lighting if you're able to. Third, better lenses, right? A, a, like a ZV-E10 with a really nice set of cinema lenses is going to produce a wonderful image compared to an A7 IV with a kit lens. And that's just because a lens captures so much more character, right? And the, like all cameras are good these days. And the thing that is gonna set you apart in your photography or videography is the character and style of your image um, and that doesn't necessarily require a good lens it just requires an interesting lens and there's so many good and fun lenses out there that you can get for really not a whole lot of money and lastly color grading like people really underestimate color grading most people don't know that an image has been color graded unless they really know what to look for for example this shot uh, has a pretty hefty color grade on it if I take all you know we, if we go all the way back to s log here um, which is a flat picture profile, if I was to bring that back to what is like a standard picture profile, it looks more like this, which is fine. Like it's, it's, it's interesting enough. If I slap on my, you know, my nice teal and orange kind of color grade that I've done for this space, 
you know, it, it just brings a whole lot more life and character to the image. And it's kind of the one that I've designed for this space. Color grading is so, so, so important. Um, I haven't actually done any videos on color grading, but I learned basically everything that I do from Color Grading Central. Um, fantastic YouTube channel that teaches a lot of really great color grading tips. And you see, this is why I think it's really important to, you know, if, if, you have a, if you have a camera and you're just not happy with the quality of the image that you're getting out of it, that's probably not the fault of the camera, unless you're working with something that's like ancient. But if you've got any sort of mirrorless camera, anything from like the Sony A6000 and up, and you're just not happy with the image, you gotta learn how to take better images. And, that, and that's okay, because it just takes a little bit of time. Buying a $4,000 camera while giving you a better potential for a better image won't automatically make you a better photographer or videographer. Now in saying that, who should buy a more expensive camera, right? Because obviously people should buy better gear as they progress. Um, but the real question is, what should I buy uh, and when? Well, once you're happy with the kind of image that you're getting and you're finding that the camera that you own is all, is starting to limit what you can capture, right? Maybe you do do a lot of fast moving shots and the camera that you have does have bad rolling shutter problem. Well, at that point, yeah, you might want to move to something that is going to be more well suited to your specialty. But don't upgrade your camera thinking that it's going to make you a better photographer. There's a f there's loads of cameras out there. You can get like old cinema cameras, you can get newer cinema cameras, FX30s, uh, you know, A7IVs, whatever they are. Like, there's tons and tons of options out there, and they all have their own little niches that are really good to use, and and they're all great, right? All cameras are great these days. Um, and yes, there, there is a time to upgrade, but don't upgrade and spend thousands of dollars until you have felt like you've mastered the camera that you currently have, then upgrade. You know, we live in a world, especially here in the States where the economy is really kind of struggling and things are very expensive. A lot of people are really getting to, into a whole lot of debt over this sort of thing. And that's just not a good idea, right? It's gonna be so much better for you to master a cheap camera than it would be to still be a novice with a really expensive camera. And look, I know it's hard, right? A new camera gets released and YouTube is just flooded with glowing recommendations of this amazing new camera and you immediately feel like I have to get it. And I, I just encourage you a little bit of self-control, a little bit of patience while you learn how to master your own camera before you upgrade to that. And once you can master your camera, if you're wanting to get a $4,000 camera, that's okay, but you need to be making money with your camera to justify the expenditure, unless you have like tons and tons of money. Maybe maybe you just make a stupid amount of money and you have money to throw at whatever you want. That's fine, but for most people like us, you know, you can't afford to buy a really expensive camera unless you make money with your cameras, right? Because that's, that's how this all works. So make sure to master the camera that you have, or if you're looking to just get into photography, get a cheap one. Get a cheap one to get started so that you can learn how cameras work. And then once you've done that, Go ahead, you can sell that for a whole, not a whole lot less and upgrade once you really feel like you know what you're doing. Anyway, this video has been a little bit of a ramble because it's sort of, it's just been something that's on my mind recently. But if it's been helpful to you, let me know in the comments down below. Drop a like button if you've enjoyed it or maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so and I hope that you have a wonderful day.